and welcome to the Cult Cinema Circle podcast. My name is Jesse, and I'll be your host. So today, we're going to be covering what I watched in the month of May this year. So hope everyone had a good May. We're coming up on Pride Month, and you know, you're hearing this on June 1st. So happy Pride, everybody. Happy Gay Month. Love it. Um, and if you don't like gay things or gay people, uh, get the fuck off my show. Like, I don't know what to tell you. But um, <laughs> let's move into a little bit of what I watched in this uh, last month. So... Speaking of gay, I actually started my month with watching a little movie called Slay from 2024. This is a Tubi original movie. Um, So this movie, it's um, these four drag queens, and they go to this kind of bar in the middle of nowhere. It's actually uh, because of a booking mistake. And they find themselves performing for like a mostly uninterested crowd. Um, But then vampires decide to attack, and then the crowd of people in this uh, bar uh, look to these queens for uh, help and to save the day um so this stars um rupaul's drag race alumni trinity the tuck uh heidi in closet and also crystal method and then i believe drag race uk alum uh caramel uh as the four drag queens and then you have some like kind of random folks like uh as some of the supporting cast but i really like this movie it was a three and a half for me I said on my review, I said, for being a Tubi original, this is a pretty good time. I really have not watched a ton of Tubi originals. I mean, like, I have watched, like, Terror Train, the one that they made new, which I actually did not hate. Um, Even though, I mean, I don't love the original Terror Train with, like, Jamie Lee Curtis either. But, like, this one was actually not that bad. And then in terms of, like, Slay, like, it really wasn't. Like, it's surprising to me that, like, a Tubi original, like, can actually be kind of decent. Again, your mileage will vary on it. But overall, like... I really did enjoy myself personally. So yeah, go check out Slay. It's like on Tubi for free. The ads might be whooping your ass and I get it, but also like, Hey, it's what you get for getting shit for free. You know what I mean? So yeah. Then the next movie I watched was actually one I've been meaning to watch a little bit um, because it has uh, Seth Green in it. It also has Breck and Meyer in it, but this is called Changeland from 2019. So this is actually um, written and directed by Seth Green. So this movie is about um, these two best friends or estranged best friends played by Mr. Seth Green and Mr. Breck and Meyer. Um, they are going on this epic life-changing adventure in Thailand as they're reminded that there is um, no problem that friendship and a few rounds um in a muay thai um boxing ring can't fix um so for me at least like i gave this a two and a half personally um i just wish this was better uh but i mean the location is obviously very beautiful they shot it on location in thailand um it, it just would have been nice if they were like gay or something like, cause the whole thing is like, okay, so these, so the thing is, is Seth Green's character. He um, was supposed to take this trip with his fiance, I guess, but then he is on, uh, he's like, Hey, I think I'm being cheated on pretty much. And he just kind of leaves without telling his, his partner. And um, yeah, they uh, happen upon each other uh, at this airport, these two friends. And um they decide okay we're gonna go on this trip together i guess and um yeah it's like a whole thing uh so for example like uh brenda song is in it. actually macaulay culkin's in it too if you don't know that they're an item together they have literally have a baby together um but also claire grant is in it and if you don't know who claire grant is that is seth green's wife so uh you know needless to say like this is a way for seth green to be able to go on vacation with his friends and make a movie um i just wish it was a better movie personally so I, you know, I'm okay that I checked it out. I tend to like what Seth Green does, and I I like him as an actor. Uh, but this wasn't blowing my mind or anything like that. So you know, I would skip it personally. But if you want to, go ahead and watch it. But that's just what I think. And then the next movie I watched was actually on the Criterion Channel, and this was actually uh, one of it's a early role for Miss Laura Dern, um, and it's called Smooth Talk from 1985. Oh, also by the way, go check out if you haven't already done so. I was on Video Dropbox uh, last month, and I covered Citizen Ruth with the boys over there. Uh, that movie's fucking rad. Like you need to go watch it. But please go listen to that episode. Give them some love. They have a great show. I really like them. So yeah, we we had a fun time talking about that but yeah this is a Laura Dern movie and so 
It's kind of early for her. So it's based off of a short story, like a little short play called Where Are You Going? Where Have You Been? by Joyce Carol Oates. I think she actually wrote the screenplay for it. Um, This film chronicles 15-year-old Connie, played by Miss Laura Dern, um, her sexual awakening in the Northern California suburbs, and her experimentation gets out of hand when um, uh, the mysterious man Arthur Friend, or Arnold Friend, sorry, (laughs) um, takes an interest in her. So this was female-directed, female-written, and and yeah, so has like Treat Williams in um, the role as Arnold Friend. He's been in a couple different things. He's mostly known for being in like The Empire Strikes Back and like he's in Miss Congeniality 2 and a couple different things. He's since, I think, passed away. But yeah, he t- died last year. Um, but yeah, he was he's really menacing in this in a way. He comes in near the end, really, but he's really fascinating. And Mary Kay places in this, and what's funny about that is uh, if anybody's watched Citizen Ruth before, or if you will watch it, uh, Mary Kay Place plays Miss Mrs. Stoney. So she plays actually the um, the wife of the family that takes Ruth in at the beginning, the really Christian one. So it's just very funny how like that kind of worked out. So. Yeah, good old Mary Kay Place. We like her. I mean, I gave this a three and a heart. Like, I just said Laura Dern is an angel. Like, um, yeah, this movie is just, like, really... It it just, like, builds on itself, you know what I mean? And it's based off of... um, It's kind of inspired by, like... um, a murder that happened or like at least two murders that happened in this like area of California. And that's what inspired Miss um, Joyce Carol Oates to write this little play. So it's interesting how like, yeah, it it does feel like what the fuck's going on. I mean, Laura Dern doesn't end up dead. Thank God, but she's definitely a little scarred in a way. um, Cause we don't actually know what happened to her. Like, you know, spoiler though, she ends up going with Arnold and doing who knows what, but yeah, it's, it's all about what you don't see, I guess. And, you know, I, I really enjoyed myself with, with smooth talk and it was on Criterion channel. I didn't even know what the hell it was. I, um, was actually told if I'm not mistaken by, uh, Josh over at, uh, video Dropbox. Like I was told like, you should watch her on smooth talk. Like, and I was like, Oh, okay, I guess I'll do that. And then I found it and I was like, Oh shit. Like, yeah, let's do that. So, yeah. Then the next thing I watched was I, I decided to get on my Alexander Payne kick a little bit because I had just done the episode for, for Citizen Ruth I did. And so I decided to finally watch The Holdovers. It was on Peacock. Oh, or I, it was on Peacock. I don't know if it's still there. I think it was on Prime when I watched it. But yeah, this is Alexander Payne's newest movie. Came out last year. Um, and so if you don't know what this movie is about, uh, it is a curmudgeon uh, like instructor at a New England prep school played by Paul Giamatti. He's forced to remain on campus uh, during the Christmas break, pretty much, to, um, you know look over these uh, handful of students that have nowhere really to go, I guess. And he forms an unlikely bond with one of them, uh, a damaged brainy troublemaker um, who is played by Dominic Sessa in his feature film debut. And one of the, um, the head cook of the school played by divine Jordan Randolph in a Oscar winning performance. And uh, yeah. And she had just lost her son in Vietnam. And I really liked this movie. I gave it a four and a little heart. Um, it just feels very like heartwarming in a way. And I just like love the way it was shot. I think it's just so like, yeah, it's, I really enjoyed myself with it. So if you're at all interested in, in watching the holdovers, do it. I think divine Joel Randolph does a great job as Mary. I think Dominic Sessa like threw knocked it out of the park um, playing this this kid, and he's just like he looks so charming. Like he's somebody who obviously because like a little tall and skinny and like has long hair, like he gives me Timothy Chalamet vibes. But he seems way less annoying than Timothy Chalamet, kind of. So like I hope for a, a good career for him, and if he wants to continue that and, and be an actor, because I actually think he's pretty good. And Paul Giamatti definitely I. I know whenever I, I think it was me and Pickens talking about it of like who will win the Oscar. Right. And I thought Paul Giamatti would, and he did not, unfortunately, but I mean, I like Killian Murphy. Don't get me wrong, but this is also pretty good for Paul Giamatti. This movie is fucking weird and crazy, but it's very fascinating. And I, I liked my, my time with it. So please pull up on it if you haven't already done so. Also, Carrie Preston's there. She, like, plays somebody who is uh, kind of, sort of, like, interested maybe in in Mr. Uh, 
Paul Hunnam. That's his name, the Paul Giamatti character. Um, but yeah, it's just like kind of a all over the place, you know, with the uh, casting. There's no like real big names in it, um, except for like Paul Giamatti, I guess, and D- Divine Joy Randolph to a point. She's been in things. So yeah, but a good old Divine Girl, look at you win that Oscar. You deserved it, personally. I thought you did great. So yeah and then i continued on my alexander Payne kick um and i decided to watch the descendants because it was on something that i was uh, what the hell was it on it was like um i think it was on like it was on netflix i think it was on something else but i decided to watch that because i really had no idea what this movie was about um but you know if you want to know what this movie is about it's from 2011 and so this guy played by uh, uh George Clooney uh, Matt King he his wife gets into a boating accident and is left on life support and so Matt played by George Clooney takes his daughters uh one of whom is played by in her film debut uh Shailene Woodley uh they take a trip from Oahu to Kauai to confront the um, little like young real estate broker um, who actually is played by Matthew Lillard and who's married to Judy Greer in the movie. Um, and they were actually having spoilers, but they were having an affair, uh, you know, him and Elizabeth before the accident happened. And so it's like a whole fucking thing because what you find out is that like the daughter, um, Shailene Woodley's character, um, who kind of gets into a little bit of trouble here and there and has this sort of contentious relationship with her dad a little bit. And then it really is because of the fact that like, she kind of doesn't realize that her dad knows nothing about this affair. And then she tells him about it pretty much. And so then she's kind of there with him to be like, all right, where are we going to find this guy? Like, are we going to like do something about this? And it's just really interesting. And what's also interesting is that Matt himself is um, pretty much like he's the descendant because there he's a land baron. So he's somebody who owns a large plot or a large bit of land in Hawaii and he lives there. So like, it's him and his family who are these descendants from like Hawaii, you know, people pretty much. Um, and so it's a matter of like, what do we do with the land? Do we keep it or do we sell it off to have them, you know, do we get like some money to like be able to sell it off and, and have it be built upon and all this. And there's some contention within the family and there's all that kind of stuff. But I thought this was a good time personally. Like I gave it a four and a heart. Um, I mean, I, I don't know if I like love George Clooney as an actor necessarily, but I said in my review um, on Letterbox, my little like one sentence, um, Judy Greer is the light in anything that she's in. And I a hundred percent believe that um, she has a, such a small role in this movie, but I think she's very impactful. I thought Matthew Lillard did a really good job as well. And um, yeah, this wasn't a, bad movie to watch honestly i i did like it and i thought it was so beautiful to see hawaii and it was shot on location so it, it worked and i i liked i liked my time with it so it wasn't the worst alexander Payne movie to to watch um from what i've been told uh downsizing is one where i i did want to watch it and i i have it on pluto i think like or whenever it's going to stream so i'll probably end up watching that but um <laughs> i don't know what to think uh, it's also very long like this is about two hours almost um i think downsizing is even a little bit longer than that and i'm can't say i'm looking forward to that um again we'll have to see what i think about it i don't know yet so anyway then the next movie i watched it was actually on hulu and it was 13 from 2003 so if you don't know what this movie is it's uh Catherine hardwick she directed it um so she's gone on she was the director of like twilight miss you already with um Drew Barrymore and Tony Collette. She was also did Mafia Mama uh, with Tony Collette just like recently. So she's she's you know done a little indie movie thing. You know, obviously she's very well known for uh, doing the blue tint and all that. You know because of like Twilight and stuff. Um, but this is like one of her like kind of early things she did. And um, if you don't know what Thirteen is about, Thirteen is about a girl named Tracy who's a normal thirteen year old played by Evan Rachel Wood, and she meets this girl Evie Zamora played by Nikki Reed in this film. Um, and well, they you know are just um, they're the most toxic for one another, truly, and um, they are just doing the 
things that bad girls quote unquote do when you're like fucking 13, I guess. Um, her mom. So Evie, uh, not Evie's mom, but Tracy's mom is played by Holly Hunter. Uh, you also have Jeremy Sisto in there as well as the on again, off again, kind of boyfriend of the mom. Um, you also have Brady Corbett in there from mysterious skin. Um, he plays, uh, Mason, the brother of Tracy. Um, yeah, Vanessa Hudgens is in there too. She plays her like one little friend before she like turns into a bad girl or whatever. Like it's so weird and like yeah, um but it's a good little movie. I I gave this three and a half and a little heart. Uh, I just said it was like a super intense lifetime original movie, but I'm not saying that in a bad way. It just is what that is. And and for me at least, this movie was something I watched as a a younger kid um i was probably about 11 when this came out yeah i would have been 11 and so i probably saw this like uh, probably a year after it actually came out and i'm just telling you i mean spoilers trigger whatever you know the scene where she like literally cuts herself like with the scissors in her bathroom is like it's still like is my my brain bro like it's just like what the fuck there's like imagery from this movie that i think is just very striking and beautiful and um yeah it's just very well done and it just i guess you could say what you want about evan rachel wood or or whatever but like i do think she gives a solid performance in this movie period and the fact that it was um the if you don't already know Catherine hardwick and nikki reed they co-wrote this um because literally i think like nikki reed was like 14 or something at the time um but actually Catherine had been in a long-term relationship with nikki's dad and so she knew her pretty well in terms of that and so it's really cool to be able to see this and yeah it was on hulu and i decided to fucking watch it i'll probably i'll probably end up covering it on the show at some point um and it's just fucking awesome like please go if you would like to go check it out because if you haven't seen it i definitely think you should um expose yourself to the wonder that is no bra no panties no bra no panties um oh that just we can get into it but anyway um but the next thing i watched was actually on i think it was canopy um and i decided to finally watch it it's called uh, it's a horror movie called cutting class um this was so this movie is about um uh paula carson uh played by the one and only jill shonlin from popcorn and when a stranger calls back and a couple different things um She's being like sought out by two of her classmates, one of whom is Dwight, played by um a young Brad Pitt, <laughs> and the other one is Brian, who is a disturbed young man who was just released from a mental hospital. That guy is played by um Donovan Leach. If you don't know who that is, that's actually um I think Ioni Sky's um brother, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so yeah, random fact, but um, so yeah, the chick from Say Anything and all that. Um Um, I think that's her brother, actually. But anyway, so, uh, yeah, Brad Pitt and this guy are, like, both interested in in, um, this lady, right? In this girl, Paula. And, uh, yeah, like, I don't know. There's just some, like, murders that start happening. And who the fuck knows? And this movie... I'm sorry. It was trash. I did not like it, personally. I, um... So this is 1989 when this came out, and I am a sucker for 80s horror. Go listen to whatever me and Pickens did, like, a couple months ago. I think it was, like, um, some movie we covered. I don't exactly remember. Um, I put these out, baby. I just keep it moving, right? But, um, But I love 80s horror. And so this one, it just fell really flat. The only thing that it really has that's kind of a claim to it is the fact that it is a early role for Brad Pitt. Like, you know, this is around the time where he was getting, he had been, you know, um, not brought into the Elvira Mistress of the Dark a movie because he was too hot. So instead he was able to do this movie, I guess. And then anyway, but you know, he just, uh, it, this just did not work for me on any level, really. I thought it was going to be kind of a more like Leopold and Loeb kind of a thing. Like they would be, have been an in on it together, I guess, because they were supposed to have been friends on um, these two guys and then they kind of splintered off. 
but it wasn't that uh it could have been uh, i just did not care for it personally i will probably not be watching it again and what i think is funny is that also like um so apparently i was looking at some of the reviews for like the blu-ray because there's a blu-ray out and everything um and it has some special features on it with like jill shunlin and then someone else i think donovan leach is on it too and anyway but like uh, i think they even say they're just like yeah, the script wasn't that good. Like, you know, that kind of a thing. So, you know, it has this kind of like little cult following to it or whatever. But, uh, girl, it's not for me. I don't even know if I would like cover it on the show. And if I did, I would just say like, girl, this shit's bullshit. So it wasn't that good. <laughs> but um, that's what I watched. Uh, anyway, so the next thing I watched was actually from 1999. It's a movie called Trick. So Trick is uh, about Gabriel, who is uh, Christian Christian Campbell. And if you want to know, yes, that is Nev Campbell's brother because they look the kind of same. Um, anyway, so Gabriel is a young, aspiring musical composer whose life seems to be stuck in first act. When his new musical number gets a critical reception, a theater colleague, Perry, um, tells Gabriel that he needs to get a life before he can write about one. So he strides, heads straight to his local gay bar. Uh, so yes, this has Christine um, Campbell in it. Um, it has Tori Spelling playing his like friend, his like... Um, uh, fag hag friend, I guess. Uh, listen, I can say that, okay, because I am one. But anyway, um, but I am a gay. Uh, and then it has like like Kevin Chamberlain shows up, like uh, Missy Piles in there, in, like a little little role, um, iconic uh, role for Miss Coco Peru, um, drag queen extraordinaire. She was actually in Tu Wong Fu. Oh, you guys, my sister finally watched Tu Wong Fu. I've been badgering her forever, but she finally watched it. Good job. And she said she really liked it, so I'm happy. Oh, Lori Bagley is in this. If you don't know who Lori Bagley is, she was in like a couple little different movies here and there, but she was also Chris Farley's like girlfriend uh, before he died. Um, so she's also in that as well. Um, but yeah, so this movie, uh, personally, I, um, no, I did like it. It was a three and a half and a star heart for me. Um, I did like this, and it's obviously a very gay movie. Um, spoiler, actually, not super spoiler, but I do plan to cover it this year, so I'm going to probably do it in July at some point, because um, I think this actually came out in July when it was released, so I'm probably going to cover that as I'm going to cover that uh, for that time, but yeah, I, I did like it, though. It it's obviously shows New York at a certain time you know, in history, and and it's very gay. <laughs> it's about like Christian Campbell trying to find some some dick, pretty much, and he comes across this like go go boy at a at a bar, and and um they're trying to like kind of they're trying to have sex, but like he has a roommate and he can't do much with it, and oh, it's a whole thing, y'all. It's um it's a good time, and it was on Criterion Channel actually, so I decided to watch it, and I enjoyed my time. I'll have to find out more about it so you can hear about my episode I'm going to do on it, but. Yeah, good old trick. I finally watched it and I'm I'm happy with it. Then I actually watched um because during this month, if you could not already tell by my my, my microphone, I actually bought a new microphone, funny enough. Um and I used my like credit card rewards for it or whatever. But I, I used it to buy this, but then I also used it to buy, I think, um, two movies. One of which was um Return of the Living Dead. I brought the the collector edition. Um, and so that was fun. Cause I'm gonna be doing that this year as well. It's gonna be super good. And also I finally uh bought Cherry Falls. <laughs> Cause I'll be covering Cherry Falls later on this year, actually. Um, so I you can't stream it anywhere really, so I had to buy it. Um, it's not too bad it's not too expensive so yeah i'm glad i did that and so i finally owned that movie and um so that'll be fun but uh but back to what i watched i actually watched the documentary that is on this little collector's edition of return to the living dead which is truly like my favorite like zombie movie ever and it's called more brains a return to the living dead um so uh, what I will say, it's pretty well done. Like I did like the, uh, the documentary. It gives you a lot of information. It's like almost two hours, if I'm not mistaken. A lot of the people come back, of course, like Tom Matthews is there. Clue Gulliger, may he rest in peace. Um, a lot of the cast members come back. Miguel Nunez is there. Linnea Quigley, like all the people. 
I will say that unfortunately this movie is also narrated by and heavily has Brian Peck in it. If you don't already know who Brian Peck is, he's a disgusting literal child predator um, who like sexually assaulted Drake Bell. So th- that's all out in the open for everybody to know. But anyway, so yeah, that's kind of gross. And um, he is, he literally narrates this, this documentary. Um, Cause obviously like he's friendly with the people, you know, uh, who like made this, he's very much like before, I mean, obviously he's always been known as since people have known of his indiscretions, like he was even still doing core conventions, like, you know what I mean? So, cause people remember him as like, oh, you were scuzz in this movie, you know what I mean? And like, he's done other things as well. So Ugh, gross. Well, I'm going to do Return of the Living Dead later this year, as I kind of stated. And um, yeah, well, we're not going to like harp on it too much, but it's just an unfortunate blemish in a movie that otherwise is like fantastic. But yeah, but I did like more brains. Like I didn't think it was bad or anything. Like if you are interested in Return of the Living Dead and maybe you've never seen that before, it is pretty fucking cool to just like see how this movie came to be and kind of the drama that, you know, people experienced and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I enjoyed myself with with that. So, the next thing I watched was uh, a little movie that I'll be covering. Um, you'll hear it in just a couple days. I still have to edit it, actually, but it's done and recorded. Um, is actually Napoleon Dynamite from 2004. It is celebrating its 20th year anniversary this year. And, um... Yeah, Uh, if you don't know what Napoleon Dynamite is, it's made by Jared Hess, the same guy who did Nacho Libre, and um, he's a part of the, like, cartoon series of Napoleon Dynamite as well, and all that kind of stuff, but... uh this is about a listless and alienated teenager played by John Heater. Um, he decides to help his new friend, um, Pedro, played by Efren Ramirez, um, win class president um, in their small Midwestern um, high school. And he also has to deal with, deal with his like bizarre family life. And uh, let me tell you something. I didn't put anything in my little review or whatever, but I got to say... I feel like I mentioned it before, but I don't remember, though. Like, I just, I like this movie. I don't know why. It's just, like, I watched it for the first time, like, last year, or maybe 2022 or something like that. I don't remember. But, like, I don't know what it is. There are some people who hate this movie, and I understand why. This movie just fucking works for me. I don't know why. (laughs) But it just does. Like, everything just kind of works. And I just think it's... I think it's pretty well done and I just enjoy myself. Like, yeah. So that's, that's my little, that's my little thing. I just, I, I enjoy it. And I, I like Napoleon dynamite. Uh, there are some people who just fucking hate it and I get it, but I am not one of them, <laughs> at least right now. <laughs> So then the next movie I watched after this was actually something I uh, saw on Tubi. It actually is, I think, gone off Tubi by now, but you can still find it for the free, though. Don't worry. You can look. Um, It's a little movie. It's not um, his feature film debut, but this is from 1994. It's called Threesome, and it's by Andrew Fleming, the same guy who did The Craft and also Dick from 1999. Um, This is one of his movies he did. So this is about a... um, a little kind of a sweet situation going on in college. Uh, you got two guys and a girl who they thought was a guy because of her name that they kind of put in this living situation. Uh, so it is Eddie who is, um, Josh Charles. He's paired with Stuart who's played by Stephen Baldwin. Blah. And then also um, you have Alex who is Larf and Bloyle. Um, they're put into this like, living situation and all this and then some you know sexual tension happens and um well they end up being kind of like a little thruple like threesome kind of thing going on and that's what this is you know also alexis arquette is in there before transition so she's also there um and yeah it it's uh josh charles is playing little you know gay confused kind of james charles you know james charles wow um josh charles is playing little you know gay confused josh charles if you will and um yeah unfortunately though i did not really care for this one i gave it a two and a half and uh, i did not give it a heart um i just didn't really care for it i just was not all that um 
that interested in it. Uh, and, you know, it's one of those things where I kind of wonder sometimes where I'm like, do I have to watch it again? Or like, do I have to like give myself a chance to like hopefully enjoy it? And to be honest, I mean, you kind of know if you know, right? Like, it, it's not going to, like, help anything if I just watch it again, because I'm probably still going to be like, I know the fishnets are ripped, you know what I mean? So, like, it's, I just didn't really care for it too much. A lot of these people, I think the only person who I really actually cared about in a way was Josh Charles's character, and that's only so much. Um, and again, you already know I love me an unlikable character. I don't need my characters to be likable necessarily. However, this just kind of bored me personally. So it was not for me, but that doesn't mean it will be not be for you. So you can definitely go and watch it. But you know, that's my two cents on it. Then, um, actually, because the podcast Save the Last Pod, uh covered it and i thought why the hell not and it was actually on tubi so i was like oh hell yeah like i'm gonna watch this um i decided to watch the rules of attraction um from 2002 uh i will tell you this much i had no idea what the fuck this movie was like at all and then finding out that this is a movie that was um it's actually in kind of the canon of um American Psycho, if you didn't know that already. Uh, it was literally a book that was written by Brent as Easton Ellis. And and yeah, it follows like um Patrick Bateman's like younger brother, pretty much, like legitimately, um, who in this movie is played by one James Vanderbeek. Um and yeah, so it is kind of wild. Um, yeah, it's uh, James Vanderbeek, like I said, Ian Summerholder before he like became a fucking like sexy ass like vampire or whatever he did. Um, he plays a, a gay man in this. Let Jessica Biel's in it. Stan Sossman's in it. Kate Bosworth is there for like eight minutes. Um, you then also have like Jay Baruchel and like Thomas Ian Nicholas. That's the guy. That's the one that. Tara Reed um, dates in American Pie, everybody. Um, but yeah, uh, kind of just all over the place. Like there's a bunch of different people in it and a uh, Swoozie Kurtz is there. Love that. Ew. Fred Savage is there though. Gross. Like, ugh. but yeah, so you got all that going on. And it's a, a fun little time. I gave it a three. I didn't give it like a heart or anything. Um, it was fine. Uh, it's very, you know, it's very sexy. You know, you got like the drug dealer going on because I think Ian Summerholder sells. Dr oh, no. There's a drug dealer that um, the Bateman brother, fucking James Vanderbeek, works with, you know, because he kind of sells some drugs a little bit. Um, there's also, oh, I guess, a virgin. I guess Shannon Sossman is supposed to be a virgin, I guess. Um, and then also uh, Ian Summerholder's character is bisexual in this movie, if I'm not mistaken. So that's a whole thing as well. But it was a good little time. I didn't dislike my viewing of it. And like I said, I, I was listening to the Save the Last Pod episode and I wanted to like watch that. So that's why I watched it. And I was like, oh, lucky me. It, it's on Tubi. So that was nice. But yeah, so, you know, if you want to go check it out, go check it out. I tried reading, like, a little bit of American Psycho. I literally put it, like, on, I, like, put it on hold. And, like, I thought, okay, I'm going to try and read this. And I literally was like, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to be reading this. Who kn I don't think so. But, um, you know, sarate, whatever. Um, then the next film I watched was uh, from 2000. I will actually be covering it uh, later this month, actually. I need to actually edit that episode because I re-recorded it. But um, it is Psycho Beach Party from 2000. This has uh, Mr. Charles Bush in it playing uh, Sergeant Monica Stark. Um, and it has, like, Lauren Ambrose in it. This is an early role for Miss Amy Adams and a couple different random-ass people. Beth Broderick's in this, like, fucking Amy. Aunt Zelda from Sabrina's in it. Like, if you don't know what this is, it's about um, Chicklet, played by Lauren Ambrose. She is a 16 year old tomboy who's desperate to be a part of the in crowd of like Malibu beach surfers in her little town. Um, she's like the typical all American girl, um, except for one little problem. She has um, split personality. And um, one of those personalities might be a murderer, damn it. Um, so, yeah, this is a movie where. 
you know, it's a uh, it's a mix of like psychodramas from like the fifties, and then you have like slashers from the eighties, and then also just like sixties like beach movies, which I um did not include on here, but I did watch like forty five minutes of like beach blanket beach blanket bingo, I believe. Say that three times fast, but um. Uh, I did not finish it, unfortunately, and I think it's off Prime now. Um, listen, I needed to watch as much as I needed to, okay? Like, I, it's not like I just like those kinds of movies, like, really, at all. There's no reason for me to. But, um, yeah, I think I have to be the mood for those. Oh, I'll get to something in a minute that also kind of talks about 60s beach movie. But, um, yeah. But I liked this one. I've watched it before, actually. And so I'm I'm glad I was able to to revisit it for the show. And I enjoyed myself. I'm a Lauren Ambrose stan account over here. I love her from Six Feet Under. And she was great in Yellow Jackets recently. So um, this is also a nice little early role, role for her. P- post, like, can't hardly wait and all that. So. So, yeah, and it's on Tubi like a lot of the time, so you can end up watching it for the free. So, with that being said about like Psycho Beach Party, I decided to kind of finally just watch because why the hell not? Um, I decided to go on Disney Plus and watch a little movie from 2013 uh, called uh, Teen Beach Movie. <laughs> and the reason was really because like I had just watched Psycho Beach Party, and so I was like, let me watch this thing because I know about it, right? And so I was like, okay. And I will say, so if you don't know what Teen Beach Movie is, it's a DCOM, a Disney Channel original movie. This is about um, Brady and Mackenzie. Brady is played by Ross Lynch, who was on a show called Austin and Alley. I have no fucking idea what that is. And then you have Maya Miller, or Maya, no, no, Maya Mitchell, sorry, not Maya Miller, Maya Mitchell. Um, She was in, like, The Fosters, um, and she's been in a couple different things. This is actually her film debut, if I'm not mistaken. Bacon. Um, but she's kind of had a nice little career for herself. So she plays Mackenzie, um, or Mac is her little, you know, little uh, nickname. Anyway, so they're like a little couple, but then she's having to like leave to go to school or whatever. And so that what ends up happening is that they get transported into this um, 60s beach movie called Wet Side Story. <laughs> Which is like this like 60s beach movie or whatever within the universe. And um, so then they have to like, so what ends up happening is that like they kind of uh, unknowingly mess the story in the movie a little bit. And so like uh, hijinks ensue from there. Songs are there. Like it's a whole thing. Like they have to like uh, fight villains that are in the movie. It's like a whole thing. And then um, they come back to their, their world. Um, like Ariel from the little mermaid kind of, it's a whole thing. So, but I will tell you like this movie was so fucking fun personally. Like I highly enjoyed myself. I gave it a three and a half and a little heart. Um, this is a super fun campy time. Like, I think it's worth a watch. I think it's really better than a a lot of Disney Channel original movies. Not that I'm like a connoisseur of it, but I will say like they didn't have to go off as hard as they did with like the music of this. I thought the music was really good. The guy who directed this actually did, I think, choreography for like Flashdance and like other big productions and stuff. So he obviously knows how to like make shit look good and make dances look good and stuff. So there were some bops in this like there was some fun times and i enjoyed myself like barry bostwick is there like in the beginning and the end um he plays the grandpa of like ross lynch or whoever the fuck or i think it's maya um uh, mac like i think he plays her grandfather or whatever anyway so but yeah it's a, a really good time uh I also love, so Jordan Fisher's in this, like he was from High School Musical, the musical, the series, if I'm not mistaken. Um, And he's just like a little wonderful Broadway boy. Um, But also Garrett Clayton's in this. He's a fun little gay boy as well. He plays like Tanner, who's like the literal Ken doll of like the fucking movie, pretty much. Um, He's like one of the male leads of, he is the male lead of this wet side story or whatever. Um. And then you have like fun people like uh, Kevin Chamberlain's in it. So he was in Trick back, you know, when I was watching that in 1999. But he plays one of the villains in this. Um, Steve Valentine, um, for those who don't know, that's like an actor. Uh, anybody who may know him, he's been in like um, 
random shit, I guess, like Spider-Man 3, and he was in like the Wizards of Waverly Place movie. Um, if anybody remembers Don't Look Under the Bed, he actually played the boogeyman. So that's Steve Valentine, if you didn't already know. Um, but he's kind of made a, a little career for himself. Um, but yeah, he plays one of the villains in this. Like, it's just a good time, y'all. Like, I really enjoyed it, but I did say thank God that Tanner is a full-on homo with a husband, because he is. Like, Garrett Clayton is gay. He has a full-on husband. Um, His husband has been on the movies that made us gay, like, twice. One of which talking about my best friend's wedding, so, you know... (sighs) Greatness sees greatness, obviously. Um, and then him and Garrett were actually just on for the birdcage. Um, I'll get to that in a minute, just because I did watch a movie that also has to kind of do with the birdcage a little bit. Um, but yeah, go check those out. They were super fun episodes to listen to. And yeah, I loved Team Beach movie. I really did. So I might watch the sequel. I heard it's not that good. But you know what? It might not be that bad, to be honest. But we'll, we'll see. And then... Second to last movie I watched was um, a little movie called The Jessica Cabin from uh, 2022, actually, but it just came on Prime. Uh, This is a movie, it's a 73-minute movie. It was actually done by Daniel Montgomery, um, who I actually follow him on Instagram. I think he might follow me back. Uh, We message on there here and there, so Daniel, you're probably not listening to this, but hey. Um, Anyway, but uh, he is actually one of the Montgomery twins, so he is, uh, so Daniel Montgomery and then his his uh, brother, Matthew Scott Montgomery. Um, For those who don't know who Matthew Scott Montgomery is, he is actually one of the best friends of Demi Lovato. Um, So if you remember that, episode if you remember that show where Demi Lovato like sang to aliens or whatever um Matthew Scott Montgomery is on there so yes Daniel Montgomery is the brother of that guy um but they also like um yeah like uh Matthew was on like um so random you know that show that was sunny with a chance on Disney Channel and then it got turned into so random after she had to go to rehab so that whole thing uh, but Daniel's had his own little thing like they both have been on Jane the Virgin like they have like different little uh, careers going on and this is one of the things he did like this is kind of his little feature film debut that he did and it's like a little queer ghost story about like love, loss, connection it's told through a very dark comedic lens if you will um, and yeah it's it is very like <laughs> it's very uh, it, it's a different kind of comedy in a way. Um, and I personally think like I gave it like a three and a little heart. Um, I didn't think it was bad necessarily. I can understand why some people may be like, eh, it's not for me. Um, I get it. But also it's like for a first feature, I think it w- did pretty well. It's very unabashedly queer. Cause you know, the Montgomery twins are very, very gay. Um, Go listen to their podcast, uh, Welcome to Deadcast, or, yeah, I think that's what it is. Uh, they do a Goosebumps podcast. Um, so, yeah, definitely go listen to them. I listen to them, and they're great. Um, and actually, on Scarred for Life with Mary Beth and uh, Terry, Mary Beth Meek Andrews and Terry Miznard, um, they uh, actually interviewed uh, Daniel, and they talked about The Haunted Mask, the episode from Goosebumps in the 90s. So, I just said in my little review, my titties is out because that's like just something that they say in the movie um at some point it's like a whole thing i'm not going to spoil it or anything um it's on prime right now so i mean this could very well work for you maybe um i just think you gotta go in with as open of a mind as you can and just let it kind of wash over you in a way um and if anything it's a feature film debut if anything like maybe daniel gets better from then you know what i mean like uh But I think just coming out of the gate, this is a perfectly fine, like, feature, honestly. Um, Maybe it could have been shorter, perhaps, but, you know, what couldn't be? You know what I mean? So, yeah. And then um, to kind of round out the the month, I decided to watch a little movie that's on, uh, it was going off of Criterion Channel, so I decided to watch it. And um, it's a rewatch for me, although I have not watched it recently. I actually watched this back in high school. And that's um, the Mike Nichols feature debut of Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf with Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton. Um, This is based off of a play by Edward Albee. I actually studied a little bit of Albee back in college. 
college because that's what I did with my life. But um, yeah, if you don't know what this movie is, it's pretty much about a bitter aged couple uh, played by these this real life married couple at the time, uh, Richard Burton and Elizabeth Taylor. Um, well, with the help of alcohol, um, they uh, use a young couple to help fuel anguish and emotional pain towards one another. And it's just like bitter, drunk people snapping at each other for like two hours. And I fucking lived. Like, I gave it like a four. So I watched this in high school because I read the play. My English class literally read the play. So, like, um, I, I was like, all right, I was familiar with it, but I did like this. Like, it's very just like biting. It's very just like, it's pretty well done, you know? And I, I did enjoy my watch of it. It did take me a minute to kind of watch, but I will say, like, it was it was good, though. And um, it, it's kind of a classic film. Like, this one, like, five Academy Awards. This won um, Miss Elizabeth Taylor, one of her awards. It actually won Sandy Dennis, who plays Honey in this movie, one of her, uh, an Oscar, her only Oscar. Um yeah, George Siegel's in it. If you don't know who George Siegel is, he's since passed away, but a lot of people may know him. If you watch The Goldbergs, he's actually the grandfather on The Goldbergs. Um, so that's him. But yeah, so like, it's just, uh, it, it's worth a watch for sure. Um, it's not going to be for everybody, I guess, but I do think like, ultimately, um, this is a fun little movie and it's it's not like, it's darkly funny it's it's it is supposed to be because if you don't if you may not know alby edward alby is supposed to be very uh absurdist and this feels very like real in terms of like how a married couple would just snap at one another in a way especially if they're in a really toxic relationship like this but yeah i just thought it was very well done and um yeah it's a classic i i really enjoyed myself with it so yeah and then in terms of like any TV shows I watched or anything like that, um, I actually was trying to, I, I plan on trying to maybe watch some TV next month. Um, cause it's actually a part of a uh, thing I'm doing next month with, uh, horror queers. I'm going to be doing their pride watch along. And literally one of the categories is you're watching TV episodes. So at least like <laughs> 10 episodes I'll be able to watch through the month. Um, but I'm kind of hoping to also just like watch stuff as well. Well, like, um, I still want to watch Chucky. Like, I have to still finish that series. Um, and like Twin Peaks, I'm probably going to end up like trying to watch that as well because I do want to watch like the little movie that they have, um, that was released in the 90s and stuff. Oh, but anyway, uh, that, I, that kind of ended up watching, like, I will say this, I just kind of ended up watching a lot of Beyond Belief Factor Fiction. Let me tell you something. I love that little show. Like, if you don't know what Beyond Belief Factor Fiction is, it's like a little anthology series that was on Fox, and it's pretty much five different stories, and they're all, you know, like little teleplays or whatever, and... um they, they kind of range from like different like stories. So it could be like an urban legend or it could be like a horror story or it could be just like a weird coincidence story or whatever the hell, something that could be so far fetched or whatever. And you have to, um, at the end of the episode, guess whether it's fact or fiction. And, uh, it was done by, um, hosted by James Brolin in the first season. And then, uh, subsequently was hosted by Jonathan Frakes of Star Trek, the next generation fame, I believe. Um, and they actually do a new series of this in Germany. They actually produced a bunch of episodes that are not in the U S yet. Um, and they haven't been released, but, Girl, we got to get that, like, um, we got to get that, like, petition started to get those because we need more Beyond Belief um, content in this house. But you can watch it. It's on, like, Prime. I think it's on Peacock. Um, I found it on YouTube pretty easily. If you go to Film Rise, like, you'll be able to watch it that way. They have it nicely sectioned off. So, like, if you can, um, you don't have to watch, like, the whole episode. You could just kind of, like, scroll through. So if you're like, oh, this kind of story is fucking weak or whatever, um, I you know you could just kind of watch the other stories i actually went through and i found like an imdb list of um what to watch like the scariest episodes of it and so i just kind of like went and tried to find those and that's what i was doing on like some time off i had from work um so that's what i was doing and i had a fucking blast <laughs> i kind of um do want to do the i kind of want to cover that show because that is like a cult show honestly it's just like 
obviously like German people really like it for some reason, but like I this is also a show from like my childhood. Like it was syndicated on like sci-fi and like chiller and stuff like that. So yeah, that was that was what I did. And then um, you know, I'll probably end up watching like other like TV shows, I guess, hopefully. <laughs> That's my plan. But uh yeah, and the next month, as I already kind of stated, I'll be doing the Horror Queers Pride Month watch along. Um, so go participate in that. Um, I've been doing that like at least a good year now, I think. Um, because I did the Halloween watch along. I did that like two years ago and I did it last year. So I'm gonna be doing it this year as well. But the Pride Month I did last month last year as well, and I'll be doing it this year. So go check up on on their Instagram and Twitter and go see what the little categories are i'm I'm planning what i'm going to be watching as well throughout the month so that'll be a good time um but that's everything i watched for may y'all so you know going into june like this is my birthday month so you know i've got some fun content for y'all coming up um and yeah i'll probably be ended up watching some some other things got some recordings coming up uh so it'll be a good fucking time but you know do the normal stuff like uh rate uh five stars one to two sentence review on your podcatcher of choice follow the show on instagram and twitter uh email me at cult cinema circle at gmail.com and uh keep listening and uh i hope you all have a great month i hope you all have a great june and i hope you're having a good start to your summer and uh i'll see you on the next one take care bye